I'm going to do is just go over the last uh, example that we did in class. So we let f of x be equal to x squared on an interval from 0 to 2. And what we want to do is to find a c between 0 and 2 such that it satisfies the conclusion of the mean value theor theorem. In other words, f prime of c is equal to f of 2 minus f of 0 divided by 2 minus 0 because those are the endpoints of your interval. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of f of x, which is 2x, and just substitute c into x so that f prime of c would be 2c. And then we just equate f prime of c equal to the slope of the secant line. So that's 2c is equal to what is f of 2? It's just 2 squared. 2 squared minus f of 0 is 0 squared divided by 2 minus 0. And that's just equal to 4 over 2, or that's equal to 2. So 2c is equal to 2. Divide both sides by 2 would mean that c is equal to 1. Therefore, the value of c that's equal to 1 would satisfy this equation <clears throat> where c equal to 1 lies between 0 and 2. Okay. Now, a physical interpretation. We can think of the number of the slope of the secant line to be an average change or rate of change of the function over an interval. So in this case, f prime of c becomes an instantaneous rate of change. Then the mean value theorem says that at some interior point, the instantaneous rate of change must equal the average rate of change over the entire interval. For example, in example 3 of your book, if a car accelerating from 0 takes 8 seconds to travel 352 feet, its average velocity would just be 352 divided by 8, which is equal to 44 feet per second. The mean value theorem says that at some point during the acceleration, the speedometer must read exactly 30 miles per hour, that is 44 feet per second. So here you see that this is the secant line joining the origin up to the point um, a 352, then at t equal to 5 seconds, we see that at t equal to 5 seconds, the slope of the line tangent to the curve would be exactly equal to 44 feet per second. Next slide. Okay, corollary 1. If f prime is equal to 0 at each point in an open interval from a to b, then the function has to be a constant function for all x in a and b, where c is a constant. That would just make sense if, say, if we let y be any constant function, say, or f of x, say f of x is equal to 4, then f prime of x is equal to 0. And of course, graphically, that's easy to see that if I have a horizontal line passing through 0, 4, then I know that the slope of this line is 0. And the line tangent to this uh, line is the line itself. That's why its derivative is also 0. Corollary 2. If f prime is equal to g prime at every point in an open interval a, b, then there exists a constant c such that f of x is equal to g of x plus c. That means if I just take the difference between f and g, they differ by a constant c. Let's look at a particular family of curves. Suppose that y is equal to x squared, which belongs to, which is 
uh, represented by the parabola that goes through the origin. And all the family of lines would then be equal to uh, the form y is equal to x squared plus c, where c is a constant. So if we have y is equal to, this would now be y is equal to x squared plus 2. This would be y is equal to x squared plus 1, and so on and so forth. So we see that we have a family of curves and they only differ by a vertical shift of a constant value. That is just an application or an example of corollary to. And all of these functions would have the same derivative. That's what that meant. Because the derivative of y equal to x squared plus 2 would be 2x. The derivative of y equal to x squared plus 1 would be 2x. And so on and so forth. Okay. What I'm going to do for the rest of the video lecture is just uh, to work out exercises from 4.2, section 4.2. Checking the mean value theorem. Find the value or values of c that satisfy the equation f of b minus f of a all over b minus a equal to f prime of c, which is actually the conclusion of the mean value theorem. All right. So suppose we take um, number 1, and here f of x is equal to x squared plus 2x minus 1 on the interval from 0 to 1. Okay, let's go through step by step and see how we could find a critical value on the interval 0 to 1 that will satisfy the mean value theorem. The first thing we need to do is get the derivative of f. So f prime of x would be 2x plus 2. Of course, a derivative of negative 1 is 0. And then we replace the x by c, so f prime of c would just be 2c plus 2. Then we take the right hand side of this equation, and that means we need to get f of 1 minus f of 0 divided by 1 minus 0. And so I need f of 1, f of 1 is just equal to 1 squared plus 2 times 1 minus 1, and that's equal to 2 f of 0, of course, equal to negative 1. So now we take this uh, slope of the secant line, this ratio, and here it is. It's 2 minus a negative 1 divided by 1 minus 0 is 1. Set that equal to f prime of c to solve for c. And so we've got 2c plus 2 is equal to 3. Take 2 off both sides. We get 2c is equal to 1. Therefore, c is equal to 1 half, right there. Okay, how about let's work on number 2. In number 2, let's go ahead, take the first derivative f of f of x, and f prime of x would be, bring down the power 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third, which is equal to 2 over 3 times the cube root of x. And then we replace x by c so that we get f prime of c. And then we take the right hand side of, we take the right hand side of this equation. So we get f of 1 minus f of 0 over 1 minus 0. So that's 1 raised to the 2 thirds minus 0 to the 2 thirds divided by 1, and that's just equal to 1. Now we set f prime of c equal to the slope of the secant line, and that's just equal to 2 over 3 times the cube root of c equal to 1, and that's just doing cross multiplication, we get that 2 is equal to 
3 times the cube root of c. And of course, to solve for um, <clears throat> c, we divide both sides by 3, and then we uh, cube both sides. Or if we cube both sides right now, we'll still get the same answer. We'll have 8 is equal to 27c. And that means c is equal to 8 over 27. Um, we can check this just to be sure that we got the right value for c by plugging in into, there should be a c here, right there. Okay, so what we can do is just try and, or maybe you can do that yourself, is to check whether when you plug in c equal to 8 over 27, that this whole thing would be equal to 1. So maybe right now you can pause the video and then just try to check it yourself. Okay, let's look at number 3. Number 3, we have um, f of x is equal to x plus 1 over x. Now, in the first two exam, the first two problems, um, we know that this is a polynomial. It's a quadratic function, and so it's differentiable on the interval 0 to 1, and it's continuous on the interval 0 to 1. So it satisfies the mean value theorem. The same thing with number 2. Um, it's differentiable on the interior 0, 1 even if it's not differentiable at 0, but in the interior it is differentiable. So we didn't even check whether it satisfies. We've already assumed that from no, for number 1 and 2, they both satisfy the hypotheses of the mean value theorem. But let's look at number 3, because 3, you have a ratio here. So we got to be careful uh, where we will evaluate the, or use the mean value theorem. Okay. Notice that if we take the interval from 1 half to 2, f is continuous there because the discontinuity occurs at x equal to 0. And since uh, 0 is not in this interval, then we're OK. And of course, when we take the derivative again, 0 is where we have to watch out. And so f is still differentiable on the interior, on the open interval, 1 half to 2. Okay, so just like in number 1 and 2, we take the first derivative. So the first derivative of f of x is 1 minus, okay, you bring down, why is it minus? Because you bring down the negative 1 and then take off 1 from negative 1. That's why you'll have 1 minus x to the negative 2. Or that's equal to 1 minus 1 over x squared. And then replace the x by z squared. So f prime of z is equal to this expression. And then we'll take the slope of the secant line. And we get f of 2 minus f of 1 half divided by 2 minus 1 half. And just substituting everything here to this expression, we'll have f of 2 would be 2 plus 1 over 2 minus, okay, uh, the pr in parentheses, f of 1 half would be 1 half plus 1 over 1 half. But what is the reciprocal of 1 half? It's 2. So these are just really identical terms. That's why it's equal to 0. Divided by 3 over 2, that's still 0. And so we will set f prime of c equal to 0. And that means 1 is equal to 1 over c squared. And either cross multiply or multiplying both sides by c squared, we see that c squared is equal to 1. Take the square root of both sides, we'll get uh, on the right hand side plus or minus 1. Now, what is the value of c that belongs to the uh, interval, to the open interval 1 half 2? And the one that we will get will be the positive 1. Since negative 1 does not belong here, then we just take c to be equal to 1. 
Again, what you can do is just uh, plug in C equal to 1 here, and sure enough, 1 minus 1 over 1 squared will give us a value equal to 0. Which of these functions from 7 through 12 satisfy the hypotheses of the mean value theorem on the given interval and which do not? Give your reasons for your answers. So what we'll do, we'll just go through some of these problems. Okay, let's take number 7. Number 7, f of x is continuous from negative 1 to 8. Okay. And the only problem is when we take the derivative, okay, f prime of x is equal to 2 thirds x to the negative 1 third, which will bring your x to the, in the denominator. And that would mean that it's equal to 2 over 3 to the, times the cube root of x. And notice that the derivative is not defined when x is equal to 0. So, this function is not differentiable at x equal to 0, which is an interior point of this interval. That means we cannot use the mean value theorem because it doesn't satisfy the hypotheses of the mean value theorem on this given interval, negative 1 through 8. Okay? Let's look at number 8. Number 8, we take x equal to... Uh, f of x equal to x to the 4 fifths. When you differentiate f of x, we'll have 4 over 5 times x raised to the, that's 4 fifths minus 1, which is negative 1 fifth, which is negative 1 fifth, and that's just equal to 4 over 5 times the fifth root of x. Now here, the fifth root of x, being in the denominator, would mean that it's not differentiable at x equal to 0. But since the function is continuous on the interval from 0 to 1, and it's not differentiable on the end point, but it's differentiable on the interior point from 0 to 1, then um, number 8, the function number 8, does satisfy the hypothesis of the mean value theorem. Okay, how about number 9? Let's check out number 9. Another way, way of writing number 9, f of x equal to the square root of x times quantity 1 minus x on the interval from 0 to 1, is just to multiply this through so that we can differentiate it easier. Then another way of writing f of x would be the square root of x minus x squared, or using, defining it in terms of its power, it would be the quantity x minus x squared raised to one half. And this is continuous on the, in the closed interval from zero to one. Now what about taking its first derivative? When we take the first derivative, of course we bring down one half, and then this whole quantity raised to the negative one half and then by chain rule, we have to take the derivative of the inside. When we take the derivative of x minus x squared, it'll be 1 minus 2x. And rewriting this whole thing, we see that the derivative becomes a ratio of 1 minus 2x divided by 2 times square root of x minus x squared. And because this is now in the denominator, the factors x times 1 over x will be 0 when x is 0 and when x is 1. So <clears throat> what is our interval? Well, our interval is from 0 to 1. Since the only time that it's not differentiable is at the endpoints, then this still satisfies the hypotheses of the mean value theorem. It's continuous on the closed interval 0 to 1 and it is differentiable on the interior, uh, on the open interval from 0 to 1. Let's look at number 10. We've got a piecewise function, 
right here. And if you recall, the limit of sine of x over x as x approaches 0 is 1. But f of 0, as we defined here, f of 0 as defined here, is equal to 0. Since the limit as x approaches 0 is not equal to f of 0, that means f is not continuous at x equal to 0. So already it doesn't satisfy the first uh, condition for the, of the mean value theorem. So we cannot use mean value theorem on the function uh, on number 10, of the function of number 10.